Yo, everybody, this is my honest take on the vintage clothing industry right now, featuring just being outside. I firstly want to see how far I can stretch this microphone, and then we'll go there. Oh, Lisa's here. Lisa, you're joining me right on the camera as I've just got it on, so big up to you. One of the semi okay creators of coffee. I'm sorry, I'm not actually got a coffee from RKD right now, which is over here. You're in the distance. There you go. I'll come in for one maybe later. A take on the vintage clothing industry and where I think it really sits. The reason why I wanted to do a video like this is just because I wanted to take this topic from a distance. Morning, mate. You're right and kind of just do it in this fashion. Like, the whole concept though, it looks funny, but at the same time, it looks funny to who? I don't know. I've been thinking about the COVID, like the vintage COVID industry, and I've been trying to look at it in a way where it doesn't make me look like I'm coming from that older perspective that's been there and seen that and knows best, because I don't know best, and I think that every day other people show new challenges. Also, FYI, you'll hear me, but you might not see me. Watch this, three, two, one. I kind of wanted to just literally talk about the vintage clothing industry. I don't know, just sort of like think about that concept really. I come from doing it since 2012, doing it for how many flipping years? Literally, starting from a bedroom, coming to this little space where I'm at right now, Gully Garms HQ. Been doing this whole business since 2012. In the last few years, I'll be honest with you, I've definitely pivoted from just being a vintage clothing seller, moved to like a second hand side of things. But why did I actually move from vintage to second hand? Like, what was that pivotal moment for me? Because maybe that pivotal moment might be something that you'll be interested by. I wanted to use this video to kind of break out this thought see what I think about it really I literally have dealt with people who have been much older in much different positions and all these sort of situations one thing that I never wanted to be is that resentful guy that wish he could have connected better with it at the time so the reason why I shifted from vin purely vintage to in a more of a second and sustainable approach is because the one thing that I did was I scaled up on having a team of people to work with having like an infrastructure to have going on premium stock going on building all of this like infrastructure in of itself one of the things that I didn't keep on tabs with was the fact that vintage as it's demand and in point was going to go higher in price and be more more competable to the the average person that couldn't buy it at that price just had a quick check this actually looks quite cool i like it and like look there was points where i prioritized i used to have months where it was twenty thousand pound a month just for the staff that i had like when you're paying 20k a month for staff that could have been st money that you spent on stock and all these ways of looking at oh i wish i could have done this better but i don't wish i could have done anything differently in fact i wish i was over this side of the road and just living like more of a human being. And I think that's all it's about. To this point in this video, what the main thing that happened is that I expanded on a team of people. I expanded on having a workforce. I wanted to value team and a community and I believed that building a team of people would build a team of ideas that would expand into that. But at the time, and being totally truthful, I was probably the only person who was passionate about the vintage and secondhand side of the element. I was the only person that was actually passionate about that ecosystem itself. A lot of people I'd employed weren't really like about that too much. What happened is I had a big team of people. I had all this other stuff that I was doing. I was building all this other type of situation. And understandably and unfortunately, it just meant that I couldn't expand on investing more money in the vintage. We tried like our own t-shirts. We did all these different types of little ideas and designs and stuff like that. But for me, the whole connecting point was the vintage element. And once I realized that I wasn't gonna be able to source vintage in the same way that some of my competition were, I wanted to look at how I could expand on this idea of what I was doing. I, I tried in the last three or four years to adopt myself as like the second hand version of TK Maxx. I'm not bothered about the process of it being vintage or secondhand. I'm just bothered about the principle and process of it being sustainably sourced. And that's one thing that I think gets missed with vintage clothing selling is that they, people that sell vintage think that it's a sustainable practice. But if you are sourcing purely vintage and taking out all modern, what happens with all the other modern shit? You're taking a premium stuff for a premium price. It does affect the system. But going back to the question, what are my honest thoughts on vintage clothing, the industry of it? Like, what do I genuinely think about it? Honestly, I think that there's a lot of people that are in there doing it now. There's a lot of people that jump to set brands. There's nothing wrong with that my opinion is my opinion on people that sell stussy people that sell car hard. but if that's how you make your business and how you make your money then kudos to you and like more more wins for you to do that my process and point is probably the same way that we look at anything that's not sustainable it's a depleting source vintage is relative to its age and its definition can be skewed based on the years and ages but realistically what people are looking for there's not going to be a never-ending supply of and the issue that we embark on is that fakes and reps get really good so there might be an argument to say that vintage nike sweatshirts vintage sweatshirts you see could be being replicated and with that aesthetic that they are vintage if you think why would spencer have that opinion well there's potentially a panorama video that i might might do it's going to expose something that you might not be aware of i think that it might be good for me to sit down in a video and break this down and by the way it would be a panorama because the people would not want me to know that this is what's happening yeah man life is sweet Life is good and vintage clothing selling is a big part of what made my life sweet for a long time. I'm just grateful. I get to work with Marge. I get to do the things I do. I get to live a nice life and still be around clothes, still be being sustainable and all this kind of stuff. So guys, this has been a bit of a different video. I hope you enjoyed the, the little interaction cut, just being outside. Like Again, 
we don't care. This is just like, this is a nice little background. The sun, the sun and the light is all nice. And don't worry, Spen's not trying to get run over. So guys, I really wish you nothing but well. And I wish you nothing but success in what you're doing. Trust your own processes. Keep running with it. And yeah, till tomorrow, let's smash it.